Yeah. Okay, good deal. So welcome again, and it might not look like spring everywhere outside at the moment, but we're gonna to try to make it look like spring on the paper here tonight. So I'm really excited. Some of the tangles, you know, like what we did last time, um, this was, yeah, you know, a little structured. And then we, we got a little crazy outside the lines here with the border being Preton, more like, like um, some snails, you might say. And so anyway, what I'd like to do tonight is go ahead and get started and, and you might recognize this as maybe a bloom or a blossom or something, but I don't want to get, you know, too much uh, hype and because you might think, oh, mine doesn't look like that. And I don't, I don't really want to set you up for any disappointment. So we'll just have fun and see what comes. And if you're new to this, welcome. I think you're going to love it. This is a great group and so much fun. The hour goes just like that. And it's mostly just repeating some elemental strokes. We use patterns, we take the patterns apart, we put them back together and create something beautiful. And you know, you've heard me say several times that no mistakes, only opportunities. And just one stroke at a time, we're gonna make something really beautiful. And I think you've seen that several in the sessions past. So with that said, I'm ready to get started. And again, if you're new to this and you're wondering what my name is, it's Stephanie Funky. And that's my email if you want to contact me with any question you might have about Zentangle. Okay, so I'm gonna jump right into one of the uh, pieces that you have in your kit from the library. And if you don't have this, this is a four and a half by four and a half square. So you get an idea as to what we're using. And okay, so I'm gonna zoom in a little bit. And for my writing utensil, I'm using this Micron marker again, that was in your kit from the library. And I'm gonna go ahead and get started by having you put more or less somewhere in the middle, something that is, oh, sort of an orb, but it's also a little round, uh, or excuse me, a little oval-like. It might look like a rock or, a gem. So yeah, a little round and a little knot. <laughs> and if you have a favorite marker that is not this and you want to use it, I just want you to use whatever you really enjoy. At this point, I think if you've do, been doing this, you get that as well. So the next thing that we're going to do is aura. And remember, an aura is simply a line around the existing line. And this aura is very narrow. You can see how narrow that is. So just go the entire distance, cover the perimeter with that narrow aura. And you're just following the line that you already put down. Now I'm going to zoom into the middle a little bit more so you all can see. And as we expand, I'll bring the view out. So we're putting down this aura, just a little space between the second line and the first. And don't worry if it's not straight. It really doesn't matter. Okay, so the next thing that I'm going to have you put down is you're going to put orbs. So these little circles, remember? The word orb, we like to use that because it implies that we don't have to be perfect. So circles. And so how big is this, Stephanie? Well, it's fairly tiny. It's about the size of that whole metal point, the metal nib. And just have them touching one another. And I think I've shared with you how some folks have said they get orb anxiety. <laughs> So if that's one of you, you're not alone. And I just encourage you to breathe and relax your jaw. If this is stressing you out already, which I hope it's not, it probably isn't or you wouldn't be coming back for more. So you're just going to enjoy adding these tiny orbs, these imperfect circles, as you will, around the edge of this shape you have in the middle, around that outside aura. And there's no rush, you're going to get them all done 
perfectly, just perfectly for you. That's how you know it's perfect because you're putting it on your paper. Only you can make this. Now, sometimes I joke with folks in classes when we've done this before, we get going around the shape and I'm adding all these orbs and it starts to make me think way back to when I was a youngster. Like I'm thinking, I'm thinking four or five or seven or eight. And my grandmother, her hairstyle was really like a beehive. And it seemed like when she didn't have her beehive intact, she was washing it and, and putting it in pink rollers that surrounded her head. And it looks something like this. <laughs> So I always think of that when I get to this point on this shape. But anyway, I'm gonna push through those pink rollers, those foam uh, rollers. And maybe some of you remember those pink rollers or maybe some of you still have some, I don't know. And anyway, we're gonna fill the edge here, adding our orbs. And this piece is, um, more organic, more flowing, and not necessarily with the grid like we have often used. But again, we have a pattern and we're repeating certain shapes. And just one piece at a time, we have something like this. Now, some of you have been waiting and some of you aren't quite finished, but I wanna show you the next thing. What I'm going to invite you to do is to take the marker and color add ink to these spaces in between the orbs and the outer aura. You know that it's a big word, interstices, but it's just these little tiny spots. So go ahead, take your marker and add some ink to those. We did that with, if you remember last time with Twile, where you had your Preton, the snails, and then we had a little bit of space and you added that as well. That's all we're doing here. So you've done that technique before. And just enjoy this. Just let yourself relax a little bit. Notice your shoulders. If your shoulders are almost touching your ears, maybe you could just take a nice deep breath. And notice your tongue. If your tongue is pushed into your big teeth, you might just take a nice breath and relax. Relax your jaw. One of the components of Zentangle is to reflect on our blessings, essentially, and, and be grateful. Gratitude is one of the pillars of Zentangle. And I know this class, we don't have a lot of opportunity for interaction, but it's really, I really am grateful for this opportunity for the library. And with that said, I'm really grateful for all that the library in Dubuque does. I, I just am amazed at all of the programs it offers and how it just really goes out of its way to offer so much to so many. So, so I just wanted to make that point again. And I'm also grateful for all of you and I'm grateful for how brave you've been and all of your excitement and, and your beautiful creations and to how you've been brave to share your work with one another. It's really inspiring. You might notice the grip that you have on the pen. If your fingers are really wrapped tightly, you might just experiment. You might just loosen up a little bit. You might go hand in hand with your jaw or your shoulders feeling a little tight. Kind of like life, sometimes you just have to kick back, take a deep breath, loosen the grip. Now, at this point, I have filled in the interstices and I noticed that, okay, my original 
line, my original orb is a little light here. Something was going on with the nib. So I'm just going to use this, this opportunity to redefine the line. I'm just going to give a little more ink, a little more love to this line. That's all I'm doing. I'm not adding anything new. I'm just retracing it and giving it the ink I think it ought to have. So. Now I'll pause for a moment and maybe you can give me a thumbs up if you want me to hold off or proceed. Thumbs up would be go on. Thumbs up. Yeah, Abby has, okay. Okay, all right, so thumbs up, here we go. All right, we're gonna do another aura. So you got that, you got this aura thing down. So it's going to be narrow and I'm just going to, it'll look like little scallops as you make your way around the orbs. It looks like a little bird getting going here. Just cruise around these edges, these nice curves, just enjoy that. And if I could give you one piece of advice, it would be to turn that tile, turn your paper so that you have the best pen stroke, the easiest, the most convenient, the most natural flow for your hand with the pen on the paper. That's really important. If it feels good, you're probably going to love how it looks. So you're just making a nice aura. And really, this is a beautiful little piece, just like it is. I love teaching this part. And if you're working on your own and you want to do just this again, instead of continue on after we've finished, this might be something that you come back to time and again, or you, you experiment, or maybe you like colored pencils, or maybe you like to play around with markers or the, um, different kind of markers. You know, there are all sorts of markers that you can blend um, and so forth. They're a lot of fun. And maybe you are you have some already at home and you're gonna get those out and, and do another one of these and have fun with that. So lots of opportunities. So the next step, I'm going to give you um, a couple options. And some, some of you are going to say, I really don't need to make these lines. I just want to wing it. I got it. And some of you are going to say, oh, I need, I need a few lines. So I'll show you what I'm talking about. Usually I get a mixed bag. Some people want this and others don't. So what I'm saying is we're going to be building outward from the center. And so sometimes it's easiest if you say, okay, I have about one, two, three of these scallops. So if you wanna put a little line about right there and about right there, just as a landmark to see if your space is divided somewhat evenly because we're going to be moving out from these lines. So why don't you just make your way around and you might just take a moment and kind of look and you can go a little bit further. It, it doesn't have to, it does not have to be in that indentation. It doesn't have to be in that little valley, but just give yourself a few landmarks. Usually, usually that's um, inviting for people. It makes you relax a little bit feel confident as you're making your next mark. So again, you don't have to at all. Don't, if this step, you don't need it. And now I'm getting here to, I see, okay, I'm just gonna make one more. I have to decide, do I wanna make one more line or two more lines? So I think for my, I'm just going to make one more and I'll have that split into two parts. 
So I'm gonna go about right there. Okay, so I'm gonna show you on some scratch paper. Well, I'll just show you on the back of this. So you have your little scallops and what we're doing, and you have your lines. So what we're gonna do is go in here and put like a long S and then a long S back. And maybe you're saying, well, do I have to make mine pointed? You don't have to make yours pointed. You could just go way up here and around like that. So these are essentially like petals. And if you have some other idea, go for it. But that's what we're doing. We're taking the line here and here, and we're meeting at a point away from the center. And you're just going to have to notice after you put the first one down, you know, you want, you'll probably like it if they're similar in length. And width, we've tried to account for that a little bit. But here's mine, and you can see it's about an inch, inch and a half, I guess, from the point to that where the cap goes is about how long that is. And again, it doesn't matter for me. What matters is you making yours. And you just notice as you go out and you make more, how long is it? Just have some idea. Some people like to put a line, um, a dot out in front so they know where to go, about where to end up. You can do that if you'd like. It's really just about learning what you'd like, what makes you feel more confident or relaxed as you proceed. You're just making these beautiful, I, I refer to them as petals. And just let your pen flow, let the marker move freely. Now I'm gonna move this out a little bit. And probably you're just keeping an eye as you go. If you've made one bigger, one smaller, that's fine. You'll just, you just proceed, take a look, pick up your piece if you need to and hold it a ways out in front of your nose. See what it looks like. That's really the easiest way to get an idea. So I'm starting to close in. I have my last one here. I'm gonna pick it up so I can see about where I need to go. And then I'm going to place my last petal. And voila, it's so beautiful already. Going okay, everybody? Yeah, okay. See, I told you it would look like spring. I was gonna try my hardest. <laughs> okay. So now we're back to something you've done oodles of time with me. You've, you've done oring. So we're gonna go inside each petal and aura. And so I'm gonna, it's gonna be narrow and I'm going to start on the inside and just narrowly aura each petal for something like that. So now that you've made it, pressure's off, you have your petals, go in and place this aura and there's just a little space. Oh, it's so beautiful. I love making these. They, they make my heart happy, I think. And I'm so excited to see what yours will look like. And that's another beautiful thing about Zentangle. You can, you can make something. It doesn't have to start on a grid. It doesn't have to have every single move perfect 
like someone else's. We just deconstruct the pattern. We take a pattern, we have some strokes and we repeat it. And yours is beautiful and mine is beautiful. And they're similar, yet they're different. How about that? Like all of us, it's still beautiful. With each, with each stroke we add, we just put on more and more beautiful things on this, this beautiful blossom. Oh, it's refreshing. So the next move, now, if you, I'm gonna show you the next move. And if you say, I don't really like that, then do, you know, feel free to do whatever you'd like, because I really just want you to like your work. And if you don't care about proceeding what I'm asking, that's fine. You do something else. You'll know what you like. But with this now, I'm going to start here on the inner aura. And I'm going to come down here. I'm just going to add, you know, so I'm going to start up here at the top, at that V here at the point. And I'm going to come down to the middle of the petal with a line. I'm just going to draw a line. And so what we're doing next will really help enhance the center of this. And I, th I think you might like it, you'll see. So the next thing is I'm gonna work on the left side and then I'll work on the right side. And I'm just going to start way up here. I'll show you here. I'm putting in all of these lines. I'm just auraing from that very tip down the whole way. That's all I'm doing. I'm just keeping that diagonal line and I'm just turning it so I'm drawing straight toward me. And I'm just starting on the outer edge. And my the space is pretty narrow between my auras, but again, that is up for debate. That's up for what you like. You can angle this line a little greater, a little less. Um, some of you might wanna do only one side. Again, you're gonna see after this first round what you like. And I think you'll get an idea for how these lines, as we put down more ink, it really helps to accentuate the center, that beautiful center. So some people say, well, these are like petals or some people say these are like leaves, but it's just an, a beautiful organic piece and it can be whatever you envision it to be. And then I'm just, I'm gonna turn and I'm doing the very same thing, but I don't, I don't want you to get worried about, oh my gosh, do I have to bring all my lines together? No, I don't even worry about it. If, if you want to, you go for it. That some of you are just meant to do that. <laughs> I get it. But it doesn't sound very zen to me to be worried about making all the lines meet. So you do you do what feels zen like to you, please. And sometimes if we don't worry too much about it, they tend to meet up pretty closely anyway, because we're not having a lot of space between the lines. So it's gonna work out just fine. And that's what we're, we're gonna do for here. We're gonna travel around this beautiful center and we're gonna put the line from Oh, I didn't or this one. Okay, let me move over here. So I'm going to put a line at the top and a line down here, if you need it. Some of you don't need it. Go ahead and just make your line and then begin to make the auras 
diagonally on the left and the right side. And we're just gonna cruise around and do the same in each petal. And I just hope you enjoy it and can relax a little. Now I've got to go back and do my aura. That's fine. Sometimes they elude me here. And I know I've been talking quite a bit, but if you have a question, you you know by now to raise your hand or say something and we'll be sure to, to find out what it is we can help with. And I don't think we have to rush. I think we're going to get through this, no problem. So just enjoy. And the other, uh, I think another neat thing about this particular pattern is that in the center, you, you get to make some choices and you know enough now that you could decide, oh, what do I wanna do from what things that we've done previously? Or maybe you've seen another tangle that has inspired you and you'd like to try it. So the center just has that open canvas just waiting to see what's coming. And I'll, I'll toss out a few ideas as well. But, but that's pretty, pretty fun to think about what you could put in the center. And maybe you don't want to put anything in the center. Maybe you just want to leave it. Maybe just a little graphite. I'm going to make a, a suggestion also. If you are somebody who, like I said, likes color and you wanted to take a marker and just start with a color in the center and aura around that, that could be your center. And you could then tangle in that with your black marker. You could also take if you like stickers or if you're into crafting and paper or scrapbooking or, you know, I have a feeling some of you have some stickers around just because you, you like that stuff like I do. You could take a sticker that is somewhat oval or round or something that you think would work and you could then aura it and do the same thing and make your blossom with the sticker as the center. So I really hope you have fun. And I hope you explore. Um, if you have patterned paper even, and you want to put, put it on here with just some, some double-sided tape, that's another fun way to introduce a pop of color. Just so many options. And it's always interesting to me how many petals I create. Sometimes it's an odd number and sometimes it's even.
So several of you are still off camera, but I'm going to assume I haven't heard anything. Things are going well, yeah? Okay, good. Okay, I have a couple left. You doing okay? I'll be done soon. You probably are moving along as well. You know, just like magic, one stroke and one stroke and another stroke and another, and we have this beautiful piece. So I hope you just take a moment to admire how beautiful it is. Now, so the good news is we have time yet, so that's nice, we're not rushing. And I wanna reference a couple tangles that we've done in the past, we've done previously that you might want to include or you could include because I don't want you to do something you don't feel confident about. Okay, so you, you remember when we did, okay. okay. You remember when we did this piece and we used this called these pieces, we called those fescue. Do you remember that? Doing fescue? Okay, so I bring that up because we could use fescue, you know, fescue can just go all over. So if you're looking for some fun ways to have a little more coming out with fescue, we could use that as well. So that's just another option. Um, one other thing that you could do with the center, do you remember when we did these? 
We call this tipple. It's basically, you know, just putting orbs in and coloring in the center or the, the space between the orbs. So that's an option for what you could do in the center, but you can also add some of that to this area. Okay, so if you want to just watch and I'll, I'll do a few of those and then we can address uh, what I had in mind for the center. Um, what I'm getting at, Again, you might just wanna hold off and see, okay, do, do I really wanna do any of what she's talking about? I'm just going to embellish this a little bit. And so I'm going to use a little fescue and a little tipple, and I'm just going to add a little bit to the spaces between, oops, and between the petals. So I'm going to add in here an orb, and I'm going to color in this space, of course. And again, if this doesn't suit you, you don't like it, you like the simplicity of it, then that's fine. You might just want to see, OK, what does this look like? I didn't think about this. What could I do? So I've added a few more orbs, and I'm coloring in that space. And then, you know, fescue can just grow wherever, and it can just run up and down and around. So that's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna have a piece of this long stem just come out here. And then I think I want another one to, hmm, I think I wanted to intersect with this and do something like that. So again, you can, you know, you can have all sorts of things going on here. It's just, just me giving you a few ideas about what you could do in this particular space. So why don't you just um, go ahead, if you wanna put a few of these in here, if you wanna add any orbs and, and fescue to the space between, I'll just let you have a few moments and I'm going to do the same. If you have any questions, let me know. And you don't have to put fescue in each space, nor orbs. And there's not a, a right or wrong answer. And some of you are gonna say, well, I like to do odd numbers and vary the size. So you already have an idea of what you like and what's pleasing to you. And, you know, hold up your piece, hold it out in front of your, your nose so you get an idea of what it needs where. And you notice me, I'm, I'm doing these movements in the air. That's oftentimes what I do until I feel like, okay, that's what it is. That's where I'm going with that. And then out it comes. So you may do the same.
this technique of filling in these valleys, these V's with orbs, you know, that's an easy technique for you to use. Um, it helps to ground the piece and it helps. You can see when you add the ink, it tends to lift the other parts. So when you add the dark, you're lifting the other parts up. Um, and it's, it's a really beautiful, easy thing to be able to add that to your piece. So I think we're still doing okay on time. So the center, this is where I really want you to think, okay, what is it that I want to do? Um, Stephanie, would you give me a few ideas? And so I, I want to say that, yes, I want to give you lots of ideas because you've already done lots of things. You've done tipple and maybe you want to put tipple in the center. So that's certainly something you could do. Another thing that you could do is you could make a grid like we did for, if you remember when we did this piece, this was called well. So you made squares or basically rectangles. You put a, a dot in the middle. And from that dot, you went around and off the dot into each corner. That's how we got that pattern. And you could put that in the center. So I'm just referencing a few things that we've done that you could easily do in the center. Another thing that we've done that you might want to put in the center is Preton from last week. Where did I do with that? Um, here you go. We did Preton, the snails, and you could just put those in the center and, and uh, make the variety. Another thing you could put in the center were the boxes. We did this long, long time ago, it seems now. It's called hypnotic, where you made, a, you made a square on a grid, and then you placed a dot somewhere, and you made auras around it until you ran into the corner, until the, you ran into the edges. And we also did this a long time ago, Indirella, I think they look like fish. You could put those in the center. I, I'm going to take a moment and take you through. If you want to shade, if you're interested in using some graphite in the center, and if you have a, a tortillon, a blending stub, I'm going to do a little shading with you that I think you might like. Again, Steph yeah. Sorry, Stephanie. Uh, we have about 10 minutes. Okay, sounds good. So you just um, 
decide what you want. And I think I can do this in about five minutes and then give us a chance to share. So, so if you're interested in this, take your, your pencil and take your tortillon. So I'm grabbing mine right now. And okay. So I'm gonna turn this to, um, so a longer side. And I'm going to put in here with my graphite pencil, what looks kind of like a little crescent moon. It looks like a little, uh, I don't know, cashew maybe. And then I'm going to take this line and extend it along here, very close to the aura. You see that? So it's kind of like a little cocoon. And now I'm going to fill in um, the crescent moon. And so, in the center, it's going to be lighter than it is as I move toward the long side of the crescent moon. The long side of the crescent moon is going to be darker. And as I move toward the center of the crescent moon, I'm just going to lighten a little bit. So I want to put down a little, little darker near the long side of the crescent moon. And as I come to the center, I'm going to get lighter with my graphite. I, I think you can see that. There's a little gradient there. It's dark, darkest here near the edge. And then I'm just going to lightly fill that in. Now, some of you are already probably thinking, oh, I could do this with color and markers and colored pencil, and you bet, you can do this with whatever you'd like. It just takes a little practice, but I think you'll get it. Okay, so I've got this pretty close. So you can see my graphite, it's darker toward that upper edge. And now I'm gonna take the blending tool and I'm gonna go into that darkest edge and I'm going to turn the blending tool on the side and I'm going to smooth it and I'm gonna work it toward the center. So I, I just wanna smooth this really dark area first. Just smooth the dark area along the edge and keep your blending tool on the side. And just smooth that dark stuff. Oh, that's really beautiful. And that blending tool, just smooth. That graphite just rolls right into the paper. So beautiful. And notice I have a little white showing between that aura that we put down in marker. That very first line that we put down, there's a little bit of space between that and the graphite. And I'm just smoothing it in. Just invite that into the paper. That's really beautiful. So I've, done, I've smoothed the edge here and I'm just going to smooth and start to work my way toward the center of that crescent moon, something like this. You can see it's lighter here. It's darkest up here. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to, I have a lot of graphite on my blending tool. So I'm going to use that graphite that's on my blending tool. And I'm just going to start to make my way around this line that I put down here. Because I've got all sorts of excess graphite. And I can just lightly blend that thin line. And it's moderately dark. It's not super, super dark. And just kind of just kind of smooth this out, okay? Just smooth these lines a little bit and begin to work the graphite 
close to this marker, but leaving a little space, a little white between the marker line and the graphite. And now I'm going to begin to smooth this portion. I'm just going to smooth the darker into the lighter area. I'm just smoothing this in, smoothing this in. And I'm gonna come up here and I'm just going to take this darker area and I'm just going to lightly pull it, pull it down a little bit into the lighter area. And I'm going to smooth this. I'm just pulling it a little bit into the lighter area. I'm just pulling the graphite from the really dark stuff toward the lighter. Now, I want to keep an area that's mostly an orb. I want to keep this area mostly light something like this. I wanna keep most of that light, like it's sparkling, like it's a gem we've created. So if you just keep that in mind that you're just going to keep some of this, you're not gonna put any graphite on that. And you're just going to work with your graphite in varying degrees of darkness and just smooth it around. Okay, now there's one more trick, really two more tricks, but you don't have a white gel pen. So I'll show you the white gel pen, but I'm gonna show you what you can do with the marker if you're so inclined. If you really want this to look like a gem, this is what you do. It's, you go back to your O1 and you start on this edge of the marker, wherever you want it to be. And you put some wiggly line in here and you give it a little rounding at, you see how I add a little ink there? And it begins to look like, you know, so for example, you've seen a, a gem like turquoise or something, and it has some lines through it. And it's just nature has created these in the gem. And maybe this is all it has, for example. But you can, you can load it up. You can put in as many of these lines going through that gem, that beautiful stone. And I see there's a question about a tortillon. There's really, um, the ones that you have, I don't think they're great for sharpening, but I'll show you a real quick tip. You can take your, if you have a, I think I do, yeah, I do. So you can take this long, um, paper clip and insert it into the edge and push out as much as possible to, to get a little better tip. That's about my best, that's about the best I can do for you. But I know you can get them at a, like a, a local supply store. So anyway, folks, I'm gonna add, I think I'm gonna add like one more line here. Um, these, these gems are really beautiful and we didn't even use color, we just used graphite. So if this grabs your attention, you know, and you'd like to do more, I enjoy teaching this um, and you could play around with it yourself. I'll show you the last piece. If you have a white gel pen, and I like these, they work really well. If you have, it's a, it's a Uniball Signo Broad. I don't know, can you see that everybody? Okay. So, okay, this is what I like to do. I gotta get this stuff off the edge of it, but these work really well. I like to come up to that dark side about halfway and I'm going to put in what looks like basically a big shimmer and I'm gonna give it a little extra and then I'm probably gonna add a dot right about here. And I think it needs a little dot down here. 
And then you, then you really start to see where you have this gem that's got a lot of shine. So again, I know you don't have, and I'm going to put another line down here, right along that belly where we don't really have too much of uh, graphite, but I'm going to add a little line and a dot there. So anyway, this is a lot of fun and you just, you could pick up a gel pen if you'd like, but um, if you want to show yours real quickly, I know we're out of time. It's seven o'clock, but Jesus has been fun. And I hope you've loved this as much as I have. So anyone go for it, take the stage and let's see. And tell me what you think too. Okay, Peggy, you're up. Woo. Oh, Peggy, nice. Oh, you used the flower from Henetron. Beautiful. Thanks, Peggy. I love it. Who else? Deb, you want to go ahead, go for it? Well, I'm not finished. My oh, okay. Round, yeah. but, um, anyway, oh, look, look at here. it. Still working on it. <laughs> yeah. Oh, it's beautiful. In the center, you were so brave. Beautiful. <laughs> Thank Karen, you. I saw I saw you putting yours up. Go for it, Karen. Yeah. And then yeah. I did get some black paper and a white, um, and I did this during the week. Oh, look at <laughs> it! So beautiful, Karen. Wow, that's awesome. Thank you for sharing and coming each week. You bet. Yeah, I love seeing that. Who else wants to? Anybody else want to share? Okay, I, I'm not sure who it is, but SM, there, yeah, can you hold yours up? SM, can you hold that up again? We missed it. Oh, she's gone. <laughs> okay, anybody else? Let's see, I got to go back to gallery. Okay, Debbie, you want to show yours? Okay, you're still muted, but I'm going to put you on spotlight. Oh, look at that center. Wow. That's awesome. So beautiful. I love seeing it. No, Amanda? No? Oh, no. <laughs> okay, beautiful. All right. Well, many thanks again. And I just loved being with all of you and spending this time. And so have fun and tangle on, keep calm and tangle on, right? <laughs> hey, no thank mistakes. You, Stephanie, thank you. Yeah. It was really fun. I learned a lot. Okay. You, Stephanie, I really enjoyed it. Thank you thank so you. much. Thank you, yeah. Stephanie. Thank you, Stephanie. Yeah.